Hi, this video is about 10 things that annoy me the most at lower ranks in Overwatch. They're not necessarily in order, but they're definitely things that I notice every time I play a low rated account below mid diamond. I guess at the same time you could learn from it by not doing those mistakes or plays. I try to find some clips for each of the 10 things, but they're rather short, so I try my best to explain it with words. A lot of these examples can be found in my previous compilation videos, because I always clip things that are weird, stupid or annoying, so make sure to watch them too and you'll notice these 10 things that I've mentioned here. Number 1. Stalling at jokes. One thing I despise are tanks who just wiggle at chokes and never push in. They often expect DPS to get picks, usually 2 to 3 picks, before they even think about pressing W and moving forward. In my opinion, tanks are the most important role in the game, because they need to create space for the DPS, they need to show some kind of presence to draw fire to them instead of their team, they need to contest the objective, and they can still deal as much damage as DPS, if not even more. It's not that rare that I'm gold or silver damage as a tank, and I don't flame my team for it. Medals ultimately mean nothing, for me it's maybe just an indicator to see where the problem lies if things go wrong. But being DPS doesn't mean you always have to be gold damaged. That's another thing that supports often say by the way. I'm gold eliminations, what the fuck is DPS doing? Not knowing that literally the entire team can meet gold eliminations as long as everyone has dealt at least one damage to the target. Which again, means nothing at all. Supports like Zen should be gold or at least higher in eliminations, because they get an assist for people who kill something while being healed by his harmony orb, or if something dies with a discord orb on them. Another mistake that tanks often do is stand in front of the payload when you're pushing. The payload blocks line of sight to your healers and you only contribute to your enemies having clear sight and free fire on you, while your team can't help you in any way because they can't see you and you force them to move forward into a first position. Just because of your positioning you might lose an entire team fight. Not only do you lose the fights, but you also lose valuable time. Number 2. Mercy's decision making. This is something that bothers me the most, as you probably already know I'm not a fan of Mercy players. Let me show and explain why. I haven't taken that much time to find clips and examples, but I can describe it with words. Oftentimes they like to resurrect people in front of an enemy Rotog, or a McCree, or even in front of a Widowmaker, dying without being able to get the resurrect off, and making things generally worse. Why? Because you're already one person down, which is the one that she's attempting to resurrect. By suiciding like that, we're down in Mercy as well, and that makes it a 4v6 that is not quite in your favor. Other examples are healing priorities, which is basically the case for every support. Some people only heal what's closest to them, some people only heal one person and ignore the rest. Mercies oftentimes tend to heal tanks too much, which is normally not their first priority depending on the second support, but there are cases where the team is taking a lot of damage and instead of balancing a decent amount of healing and distributing it between the targets to keep them alive rather than topping them off back to 100%, they like to rest something and let two others die while doing so. It also seems to be a general thing that they die to ultimates like Diva's self-destruct or McCree's dead eye because of bad positioning or lack of awareness, especially during Valkyrie. You would think that Mercy is easy considering she doesn't have to aim and can just connect her beams to other teammates, which means you have more time to pay attention to enemies' positioning and keep track of their ultimates. I also really hate hearing support saying things like, defend the healers, we get no help. Especially as Mercy you have amazing mobility, you have a passive self heal and a damage boost that can make all your teammates deadlier to kill enemies. The best example I have is a Winston jumping onto that support and they are just not healing each other. There's no protection that you could ever provide in such a fast paced situation unless Zarya has a bubble, but you will most likely die to the Winston before anyone can kill him if you don't do something about it yourself, like flying away from him with Guardian Angel. Speaking of the ability Guardian Angel, people often use that ability and then press space to fly beyond the target. Just like this example right here, I hate when people do that. The cooldown is short, but it often gets them killed and it often turns the entire teamfight into a loss. Number 3. Running away from Dragonblade or Winston. I've already mentioned an example with Winston before, but this is a little more specific. Not only do people often cry about not getting help, but they're also making the situation worse than it already is. Winstons typically place a bubble on top of the target they jump, which means that projectiles don't go through. It also means that your other healer most likely cannot heal through it. Zenyatta would be an exception, but it is likely that he's the target being focused considering his lack of mobility. Supports at lower ranks seem to always run backwards towards their spawn, away from their team. In this example, the Zen could have even used his Transcendence for immunity, it would be an ultimate trait of 1 for both Dragonblade and Nano Boost, plus he could have healed the rest of the team further forward. But in the end, the fight was lost and we wasted so much more time. 
In educational terms, you should not run away from your team if you need help, because even if they don't normally help you out at lower ranks, at least you don't reduce the chance to literally zero if you give your McCree the chance to flashbang, your healer to heal, your Rotok to hook, your mate to freeze and so on. If you're out of range, nobody will ever be able to help you. Another good example would be Hanamura point A, where people often defend right at the choke, but when the tanks get low or people take too much damage, they tend to walk into that little room to the left. Supports are typically standing further back because it is safer for them, and they will have no line of sight to heal them. That just gives the enemy more of an advantage than before if they can just push them for free. Number 4. Picking Bastion when you're about to lose. This is an interesting and short one because people seem to think that Bastion is a good pick when you're losing. Fundamentally, something is already going wrong and Bastion is generally not a good pick, which is why you don't actually see him so often. He's stationary and therefore easily countered. Sometimes he works when some kind of snowballing is going on, but that's normally not because of Bastion himself. Number 5. People who get one shot and then complain about lack of healing. So many times people get one shot by Hanzo or Widow or just take spam damage by Junkrat Mines or a right click by Zenyatta to the face. That's oftentimes not healer's fault because there's always more damage than healing in the game. They are shifting the blame over to supports but it really is their own fault. Positioning plays a huge role in this game because there are targets with different amounts of damage, health, armor, shields and so on. It's never that simple as to just blame healers for your own mistakes. I once had a person in my game a long time ago, they were playing Winston and they were going so aggressive. I asked why are you going so aggressively? And they said that it was his job to take damage as tank. That's completely wrong. Even as a tank you are trying to take minimal damage while playing the objective and dealing damage to the enemy team instead. The games with the least amount of healing required are actually the best ones, because supports have powerful abilities that can win the fight and help with even more damage output and offensive usage of the cooldowns like Anna's nade. Number 6. What else is annoying as hell? Reinhardt's charging after their shield breaks. First of all, they don't go in and wait for their team to get a pick, which is not very likely if they have their own shields. Then they have nothing to keep themselves safe, so they charge in, which is easily countered, and then they die. I hate this so much because they often blame healers for not healing them or the DPS for not killing something faster. You should always push with the shield, use natural cover to recover it and then push again. You need it for the fight itself, not for the part where you still have to walk there for the fight. Number 7. The basics. Another thing I notice very often is the fact that people don't know the basics of for example overtime or how draws work. People oftentimes waste several minutes trying to push through a choke, then when you have about 40 seconds left, they suddenly rush to the point because you're about to lose. Unfortunately, people run in one by one with the sole purpose of triggering overtime, so you don't lose the game right there. There's no target focusing, just trying to survive and eventually dying because nobody's focusing anything else other than keeping overtime up. Basically, you're just delaying the inevitable and losing in the end anyway. Sometimes one team gets to push one more time, so it's either a draw or a win for that team, which means that they only have to capture one third of the points. People often misunderstand why they don't get another round to push, because they didn't have any time left over in the previous round, and sometimes they say let them capture the first point and then defend the second. In this case, there is no second point. Also knowing how shields and bubbles work is important too. I see a lot of people hiding behind Ryan's shield when there's a deadeye in front of them, not knowing that it can kill through shields if enough targets are locked on for a long time. Number 8. High ground. Seems like everyone at lower ranks likes to hold down at the bottom, when you have so many more advantages of being on high ground. You can always drop down when necessary, but it's also just so much safer to be on high ground because most characters can't get up there so easily. One of the things I will always suggest is to take advantage of anything that you can use, whether it's your abilities to get to certain places or map advantages. It always helps to have the upper hand, and those are not hard to execute. At lower ranks, people seem to just make games harder for themselves by not utilizing anything like that. Number 9. Ultimate combinations. Yep, it's one of the simplest things to do, like Nanoblade and Graph Dragon. Ah, and then he's a big brain and uses it on the bubble? No, not even a bubble, he just straight up misses because he's Garbo. There is nobody here! Nobody! Why do you pulse bomb like the ground? Do we need to kill the ground? Okay. And then I get a fat graph of like how many people? Four people! 
I get four people in there and he has no follow-up. And that's my fault. Oh, look at that! I even got five people in there because Hansel jumped in there. <laughs> I have such a fat graph. If only he would have waited like two seconds. But he couldn't fucking follow up after calling it out. And now it's my fault. It's my fault, okay. It seems like people don't even try to do those, but it can win fights because ultimates are the strongest abilities in the game. There's no need to catch six people in the Graviton Surge. All you need to do is get some guaranteed kills that gets you a, for example, 4v6 advantage. You can win from that point on because you're outnumbering them. Some ultimates like Hanzo's Dragon are pretty useless by itself since it's so easily avoided. Number 10 and the last one, Toxicity. People are so toxic especially at lower ranks, but you'll get this at every rank all the way up to Grandmaster. They're so busy thinking about another insult to use on voice or become keyboard warriors to type all kinds of stuff in chat and threaten to report you for being bad. The amount of times I see people leave the game just because they're the smurf and they don't care about the count is insane. I have so many smurf accounts myself. All ranks from bronze to gem, but I don't run around insulting people more than playing the game. I suggest not adding more toxicity to it. Although communication is so important and valuable in the game, this is not contributing to wins, so I usually just mute everything and just play. Especially when they say they don't care. Clearly they care enough to type something or waste their breath on insults. As you can see here, this is just a small collection of all the toxicity I've encountered. So that's it for this video, let me know in the comments what you find the most annoying in your games and what has been the most toxic encounter you've had so far. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye 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 bye. Nice, just got both DPS. And a fucking stupid ass mercy! Fucking hate this shit! <laughs>